Right now, I'd like to introduce my friend uh, and colleague, Reeve Collins of uh, Block B. He's also a very early pioneer in uh, Bitcoin investing, a really smart guy. Reeve. good friends of Paulo and Rod for having me here today and for putting this whole thing together, for having the vision and the passion to unite everyone and educate and inspire them to just share their passion about blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, and how it really can change the world. Because what we've seen to date is a lot of people around the world talking and getting involved and getting excited about the power of blockchain. And that's really what we're here to talk to you today about. Not really deep dive, but I'm gonna keep it a little more high level. You've had a lot of great presentations chatting about what is a Bitcoin, what is the blockchain, why it's gonna change the world. But I wanna give you some more broad strokes to really hopefully make it much more impactful on why it's time to get involved. So first, just a little bit about myself. Um, I was fortunate enough to have my very first job out of college be in an internet company. It was the very first digital media online advertising agency. I was a seventh employee and within two years, we grew to 500 people, went public, and were worth $6.6 .6 billion. So I got to ride, and I got to feel and experience the meteoric ride of the internet and experience that bubble. And I really had a first class ticket to the top and right back to the bottom when it burst. But I was only 24 at the time, and so it really opened my eyes to what a world-changing technology can do. And I have been starting many companies in the digital media space since then, but nothing in the last 20 years has come along that would ever compare to that ride of the internet. It's not very often in any of our lives when there's a technology that comes along that can actually change the world. And that is what Bitcoin, that is what blockchain has delivered to us. And it's still in the very early ages, the very early stages of this new technology. And a few years ago, I was introduced to it. And so I was fortunate enough to have a lot of amazing friends in the space and gave me a great deep education. And we created a company called Tether. So when Bitcoin and the blockchain first came around, people started to realize that it's a much more efficient, fast, easy way to move money. The challenge at the time was that the only money that you could move was Bitcoin. Bitcoin was very unfamiliar, very volatile, and people still weren't quite trusting it. But what we realized is that there's this new platform called blockchain that allows you to move money globally instantly for free. So we decided to put the dollar on the blockchain. And when we first did that, we got a lot of grief, a lot of pushback, people just didn't get it. They didn't understand what the blockchain was, they didn't feel it was secure, they didn't think there'd be any use case for it. It's taken a while for the world to realize how powerful that is. So now you can move real world currencies, dollars, euros, yen, as efficiently and easily and quickly as Bitcoin. And so today there's over $800 million in circulation of Tether. They do about $1 billion worth of, tra of trading volume a day. So for the industry, it's provided a way to utilize this new set of payment rails with a currency they're familiar with. My latest venture is called Block V. We recently did an ICO. We raised 72,000 Ether, which today is worth $34 million. That whole experience doing an ICO, being part of the fabric of this new, this new breed of companies, these new tokenized business models, has been very rewarding, very exciting, very enriching for me just in the knowledge that I've gained on the impact that this will have in the world. I'm really excited about Block I'm very passionate about it. The beauty of it is that it's going to be a pioneer in these new tokenized business models, in these new types of companies that don't operate with equity, but they operate with a token. They don't have shareholders, they have a community. And so everyone who contributes to that community receives a reward. They interact with these tokens, these tokens go up in value. 
The tokens go up in value based on the work that they put into the community. And so it flips the notion of shareholders on its head. Think about Facebook. There are two billion participants in Facebook. But the, only the shareholders and the founders get any of that value. The two billion people get a little bit of entertainment and provide all their data, but they don't get to participate in any of the upside. Imagine if there was a token that every time you wanted to do a like, upload a photo, add a friend, you had to use a token. But every time your friend liked your photo or shared one of your quotes, you'd earn a token. So the ecosystem would thrive on these tokens. And imagine if those tokens were akin to a share of stock, that they would go up in value as more and more people participated in this ecosystem. That's the tokenized business models of the future that blockchain technology and Bitcoin has paved the way for. And so today, what I really would like to talk to you about is how do we take this technology from the millions to the billions. Right now it's estimated that there's about three to five million people in the entire world that interact with cryptocurrencies. There are 3.5 billion people on the internet. So that's 0.01% of the people that have access to the internet, which use this amazing technology to exchange information globally instantly and for free. Only 0.01% use this technology to exchange value, money. It's kind of really powerful when you think of it in those terms, because that is the promise of blockchain. It's going to enable the whole world, anyone, with access to the internet. The ability to have a mobile bank in their pocket. When you realize that half of the world is underbanked, and a quarter of the population has no banking. You can see how impactful this will be because the advent of the internet allowed you to move information across borders instantly and for free. The advent of blockchain enables you to do that with money. So it's our mission to bring that from millions to billions. How do we get a billion people onboarded into the blockchain? Well, what that takes is an interface moment. So before any technology reaches the masses, there's a small group of people out there, scientists, researchers, governments, that have created this technology, fringe groups, and they, they get impassioned, and they feel the excitement, they feel the potential. But when that potential goes from potential and an idea to actual practical applications, that's called an interface moment. It's because an interface was created to enable the average user to meaningfully interact with the underlying technology. So when you take the internet, it was around for quite some time before 1993 when Mark Andreessen created the web browser. And what that allowed, it allowed the average consumer to meaningfully interact with this networked group of computers around the world. And then you could share information globally instantly and for free. And it changed the world as we know it. We all have felt that impact. When he created, there was 26 websites. Today, there's over 1 billion websites. Over $2 trillion in a in, in new economy was created because of this interface to a technology that had already been around for over a decade. The next big interface moment was the App Store. So now we had this mobile technology that, around, that had been around for quite some time. Everyone was using it all the time to talk to people, but no one was really utilizing it for data. No one really realized the power of this internet, of the uh, mobile platform, until Steve Jobs created the App Store. The App Store enabled developers around the world to, to create, distribute, and monetize businesses, apps, on top of the mobile platform. And an entirely new economy was created, the app economy. And today, the whole world is addicted to that iPhone. No one would have ever guessed that these types of interfaces would have such a significant impact on the world, but that's what an interface moment is. The web browser changed the world because the technology had been around and now the rest of the world could meaningfully access it. The app store changed the world. It created a world of people addicted to their phones and antisocial and just rolling around like this and bumping into walls. But you know what? It's changed the world for the better. And now today, that's why we're here. 
there's an interface being created for the blockchain today. And there's two main parts to this interface. And that is what I'm really, really passionate about to help usher in these interface moments. One is BlockV. BlockV is an interface for developers around the world to build, develop, distribute apps on top of blockchain technology. And without that interface, it's much, much more difficult. It's very similar to the App Store. It creates an environment where everyone can go and actually monetize this new technology. The second interface that I'm also very excited to be part of is Hybrid Block. Hybrid Blocks, their mission is to inspire, educate, and onboard everyone into the blockchain. And what does that really mean? It means to provide you a fun, user-friendly interface where you can easily interact with this new technology. And so step one to participate into this ecosystem, and the easiest step, is to invest. Buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum, buy any other cryptocurrency you want. Buy a dollar of it. It's not about the amount you invest. It's about the fact that you're going to participate. It's about the fact that you're getting involved in this world-changing technology. It's about the fact you're taking the first step to learn how to interact with it, to learn all these complicated things, a wallet, a private key, a public key, blockchains, all this crazy stuff that doesn't really make much sense. Um, get over that initial fear of not knowing and just get involved. And so that will be an interface that hybrid block is going to usher in. They'll make it much easier for you to get involved. And just once your foot's in the door, you'll go deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole, and the power of the technology will start to dawn upon you. And for a lot of you, you'll probably dedicate a lot more of your life to learning more and actually getting more involved and building businesses on top of this platform. Similar to the internet. When it first came out, 26 websites. Today, Everyone has a website. So now you kind of know where we're at, where we've come from, and, and, and we're at this, this moment in time where this technology is about to burst onto the world and you'll really be able to meaningfully interact with it. But I want to share a couple things of why. Why do you care? Why do you want to interact with it? What is Bitcoin? What is blockchain? You've heard a lot of different um, discussions and a lot of different analogies and a lot of different ways to figure this out. But I'm going to try to break it down in a way that I hope resonates. So think about money today. Bitcoin is simply another type of currency. You guys all travel a ton and you're used to interacting with lots of different currencies, dollars, euros, yen, yuan, whatever. Now, you can interact with Bitcoin. But what's the difference? Well, Bitcoin is way, way, way better than your money, than anyone's money, than any fiat money. And this is why. Let's look at the characteristics of money. It's finite. Well, actually, most money is not. Governments control the money supply. They add to it, they take away. Sometimes it improves the economy. Most of the time it's a disaster. Some governments do it well. The top few, most of the governments actually destroy their country's economies. So Bitcoin is finite. You can, we all know the supply, 21 million Bitcoins ever. To date, about 16.7 million Bitcoins have been created. By 2036, a little less than 20 years from now, 99% of all Bitcoins will be created and will be in circulation. It will take 100 years to mine that last 1%. But for the most part, we will experience the bulk of this currency over the next 20 years. And that's why when people say, can Bitcoin go to a million? Well, we've got 20 years to find out. And this is why it will go to the million, is because of how valid, because of specifically how much better Bitcoin is as a unit of monetary value than the traditional government-backed currencies. So I've described finite. Bitcoin is finite, government-backed currencies are not. Authentic, that's another claim to fame for Bitcoin and the blockchain and what it's invented. It's enabled, for the first time, to have a currency that's actually uncounterfeitable. You can only have one Bitcoin. You can't counterfeit it. And everyone can be secure in that fact. There is no fiat currency that can make that claim. Transferable. Well, this is probably the most important in this room. Imagine it, your local currency. Right now, you probably have some restrictions on how much you can send to whom, 
when you can send it, and how you move it around. There's a lot of oversight into what you can do with your own money. Well, Bitcoin does not have that restriction. It is your money. You own it. You can move it anywhere in the world, at any dollar amount, at any time, almost instantly, and almost for free. Possessible. It's similar to transferable. The reason why you can't transfer it is because you actually don't own your money. That's why a lot of people have cash, because they feel like they can do with it what they want, but the uses of cash is limited because you can't send it globally instantly for free. So possessible, you have a bank account. Guess what, that bank account is run by men and regulated by governments. You don't actually own it. In Greece, they took like 20% of their entire population banking deposits um, during the financial crisis. So you don't own that money. Bitcoin, on the other hand, you own it. No one can take it. It's completely in your control. And lastly, it's traceable. And why is traceability important? It's very important in the fact that, imagine, charity events, government spending, any type of spending that you want to track. Right now, you can tell there's a lot of different uh, transactions and donations and processes where money goes in and the money that you want to get to the other end disappears or a big portion of it gets siphoned off. Well, you, while you can gain Bitcoin and make it a little more difficult to track, you can also manipulate it so it's very easy to track. So imagine if you could track every dollar from the inception all the way to distribution. You could track where it went, who spent it, and what they did with it. That's the promise of Bitcoin. So when you add up, when you add up finite, authentic, transferable, possessable, and traceable, you can really realize how much better it is than typical money. So now you know what Bitcoin is. What is the blockchain? Because you hear a lot about Bitcoin and the blockchain. Well, I'll tell you what the blockchain is. It will blow your mind. Actually, I'm not gonna tell you what the blockchain is because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like, the blockchain enables you to transfer money, but what doesn't matter is how specifically it works, right? Because, do you know how the internet works? It's a bunch of protocols. A protocol is a set of rules that allows you to, that governs how data is transferred. HTTP, SMTP, I don't know how it works either, but we all use it. And so you don't necessarily know, need to know the inner workings of the blockchain, because it, on some levels it's on complex, some levels its elegance is in its simplicity. Half the reason it can't be hacked is in its simplicity. It's because simply they give every computer around the world the option to have a copy of the entire ledger. But I don't want to go too deep into what and how the blockchain works, but really the power of the blockchain. So now you know that Bitcoin as a currency is much, much better than your typical currency. Think about the blockchain. Blockchain is another fancy word for banking system, for a banking infrastructure, for financial institutions, for that entire industry. Those are the traditional payment rails that we have today. You go to the bank, you send a wire, you pay X 20, 30, 40 dollars, it takes three to seven days to move. There's many intermediaries in the process, and it's a cumbersome, inefficient, old process. It has different regulations in every country around the world. It takes a different amount of time, costs a different amount of money, and there's different sets of controls. There's no universal, unregulated banking system. Well, wait a minute, there is. It's called the blockchain, a universal, unregulated banking system. Unregulated banking system. A system that works with no oversight. It doesn't require the men that own the banks and the governments that own those men any permission from them to send your money. It provides the mode of transactions for this new type of money, Bitcoin. And it does it in a manner that evens the playing field for the whole world. It equalizes us in a manner never possible before. This money exists outside of governments, outside of kings. Prior to this point in time in history, the only people that could create new money were kings and governments. And they fought a lot of wars to protect that. And today, we can all create money. I just did. I did an ICO. I created my own currency. I traded it for another currency. Bitcoin is a new type of money created by outside of the, regulator, the regulatory system. It's very, very, very powerful. And that's why you see a lot of these challenges around regulations and governments saying it's illegal. I want to control it. I don't trust it. 
The reason being is they cannot control it. They cannot regulate it. What they can regulate and control is you. They regulate us, their people, and they try to tell us what to do. But for the first time in their lives, and the first time in those governments' experience, they can't regulate and change the system. It exists outside of them. So that's what the blockchain is. It's a new global financial system that allows you to transfer this new type of money that's much better than any money that's ever existed before it. That's why this is such a revolution. That's why this will change the world in ways we can't even fathom. Think about the internet. What did it do? It allowed you to send information globally instantly for free. That's amazing. It changed the world. But that's information. The title of this event is called the Internet of Value because the blockchain allows you to send value, money, globally, instantly, and for free. It's much, much more powerful than the Internet. And it's not just money, it's value because it far expands the use cases beyond just monetary transactions. Now you have programmable money, which opens up a whole new world of things. I want to touch on one other topic because you know about Bitcoin and Ethereum and the 2,000 other cryptocurrencies. But just to add a little insight into the differences and the nuances, a lot of them are the same flavors of Bitcoin with just a few different features and functionalities. And so the reason I bring that up is I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Oh, there's 2,000 cryptocurrencies. Well, that's because it's programmable money. Bitcoin's the most basic. It's, it's similar to digital gold, a store of value. That you, it's a new global currency that moves globally instantly for free. All those other currencies that you see, the other 2,000, they all have slightly different features because for the first time, we can actually program money. So as we get more and more sophisticated, those features are going to be extraordinary and make all our lives much, much better. But not really our lives. We are the privileged few, right? We travel to Macau. Talk about a city where you can really see the power of money. Like, these casinos are, this is the most amazing place I've ever been, and these casinos are blowing my mind. Like, this, this is the power of money that only we get to experience. But what Bitcoin and blockchain enables is it attaches, it provides that experience to the rest of the world. It allows them to at least step foot into this world of being banked, of having a bank in their pocket. They can now participate in society. So the, the the amount that this is going to empower the rest of the world also is very difficult for us to even grasp. So this chart here, what I like to show is, this shows the average price from the inception of Bitcoin to today. Well, actually not today, because this is $4,500. Bitcoin's $11,000 today. But why is that? Why did Bitcoin start out at less than a penny, and then a year later, only up to seven cents, $15, $7, a couple hundred dollars? And then we recently, it's growing. And now we have this massive spike. Because what I like to say that this chart represents is the global awareness and understanding of the power of Bitcoin and blockchain technology. I shared with you how much better it is than money. Okay, but it takes a little while for people to understand that. I shared with you how much better blockchain is than the global financial institutions. But again, it takes a long time to understand that. Lastly, the governments are doing their best to really get their arms around it so it suppresses the speed of its growth. Unlike the internet, when it came out, it was for the most part embraced and allowed to proliferate on its own. Since this deals with currency, which is near and dear to everyone, it's taken a little while longer for it to grow. And we're still in the very, very, very beginning because this is what this chart represents. It's 2017 and you get that little spike. We're still only at a couple million wallets. We're not even close to a billion. We're not even close to 10 million. Um, and so there's so much more room to grow. And that's why you should all get involved. Every day, the gentleman earlier showed an amazing cartoon of the guy curled up under his desk saying he can't even move because Bitcoin coins a million dollars. So it's not about the price, it's about getting involved. And I want to put it in perspective a little bit because when you think about Oh, Bitcoin's worth $100 billion, or $185 billion today. It's way overpriced. Where is it going? Well, this gives you a little perspective on the, money, on the value of money around the world. This chart was done a little while ago. It says Bitcoin's at $41 billion. And now today you see it's at $185 billion. So it's approaching some of these global, the value of some of these global companies. But look at Apple, look at Amazon. 
Apple's a hardware manufacturer. Amazon ships products around the world. Bitcoin's money. Bitcoin isn't going to be compared to Apple and Amazon. Let's, let's go with the market cap of gold, 8 trillion USD, 1 trillion. $83 trillion is the global economy. We are just starting to scratch the surface on the value of Bitcoin. The fact that it's way better than regular money. The fact that the, that the payment rails, the blockchain is way better than the, the financial institutions we have today. We're just scratching the surface. It's time to get involved. Bitcoin truly will change the way the world operates. The blockchain will touch your lives in almost every aspect in the near future. The reason being is because this type of technology, the way it works, makes transactions more efficient, cheaper, and faster. So when you have an alternative like that out there, the whole world will flock to it. It will take some time. It's taken a while for the internet to, to gain the adoption that it did. Remember in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was always more and more people are getting online, but we're getting there. 3.5 billion, over half the population, has internet. Very soon, they will use that internet to transact with value. I added this chart in here because I think it pulls, it just illustrates a very interesting point. So, Andreessen Horowitz, Union Square Ventures, they're two of the largest VCs in the United States, and, and I'd probably say the most well respected as far as um, investing in blockchain and Bitcoin companies. Uh, Mark Andreessen, he actually brought, face the first, he brought forth the first interface for the web browser back in 1993, creating Mozilla. Um, both of these guys have made some of their largest investments in the US in Coinbase. And Coinbase is what you could call an interface to get into the blockchain. It, it onboards people quickly and easily, or as quick as they can and as easily as they can, in the United States into Bitcoin. It's just that first step for people to participate. They see how important that is. They, they want to invest, encourage everyone to get involved. Coinbase's last round was valued at around $1.6 billion. So these types of companies that make it easy for the world to onboard, that are an interface for everyone to get involved, that's where a lot of money is going because that's where we're at. That's how we get from millions to billions. And again, that's why I'm excited to be an hybrid block. I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm excited to usher in these types of interfaces to bring this interface moment, to make it happen quicker. Because the more people you get involved, the faster the technology grows, the more knowledge, the more excitement is put behind it, and the greater things that we'll see. So, where's this all going? Not there. Ah, you lost my last slide, which is amazing. It's a rocket to the moon. Um, because everyone says, where's Bitcoin going? And we all say it's going to the moon. But why is that? What does it really mean? And this is what was most impactful for me, actually, when I was thinking about how to capture that sentiment, right? Going to the moon. It's because the world sees all of these people making a lot of money in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and diving in. And, and they want to get involved, but they don't understand. So what we're encouraging is just get involved. Um, because you will quickly understand. Because it is a more efficient and better way to do business. But getting involved, that's what I want to touch on. That's the beauty of this technology. Prior to blockchain and Bitcoin, if you wanted to get involved, think about the internet. At the peak of the bubble, there was like $7.2 trillion in value pumped into that bubble. That's what made it grow. But all of that value came from the privileged few. Who is that? Those are people with access to sophisticated financial institutions and stockbrokers. And they had the money to dive in. You couldn't put in $5, you had to put in whatever amount to buy actual stock in all of these companies. You had to jump through a lot of hoops. So that's what it took to get involved and really feel the excitement of the internet and participate. Or you had to get a job, get stock options. Hopefully those turned into something. All very complicated processes. The difference today, and the reason why I think that $7.2 trillion that poured into the internet will pale in comparison to what's going to be poured into the cryptocurrency blockchain space is because you don't need to have those access to financial institutions. You don't need to be part of the, the top percent of the world that can actually do it. All you need is an internet connection. And soon, therefore, instead of just that 7 trillion, you have access to the global population of people online. 
to actually start participating in this economy. And so I truly believe that cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, will really replace businesses, technology, and the way we do things today. And the world will change in ways we can't even imagine. So in closing, I just want to thank you all for being here. And I just hope I've conveyed a little bit of passion and excitement and understanding in why it's important to be involved in this amazing new world. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.